In this example, I need to verify the following identity, where I have the cotangent of x divided by 1 plus the cosecant of x plus 1 plus the cosecant of x divided by the cotangent of x equals 2 times the secant of x. Well, in working with identities, we always want to start with the more complicated side, and that's very obvious in this case. So I'm going to start working on the left-hand side. And I could work on this identity by writing all these trig functions on the left-hand side in terms of sines and cosines. But notice on the left-hand side, I only have two trig functions, the cotangent and the cosecant function. And remember, there is a Pythagorean identity that relates these two functions. And here it is, cotangent squared of x plus 1 equals cosecant squared of x. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two terms on the left-hand side over a common denominator, and hopefully this identity will help out. So I need to find my least common denominator. So you take your first denominator, I definitely need 1 plus the cosecant of x. Go to your next denominator. Do I have a cotangent of x here? No, so I'm going to have to multiply by the cotangent of x. So this is my least common denominator. Now I need to write both terms on the left-hand side over the LCD. So you take your first term of the cotangent of x over 1 plus the cosecant of x. And what do you have to multiply this denominator by to get the LCD? Well, I'm going to have to multiply the denominator by the cotangent of x. So you have to multiply the numerator by the cotangent of x too. Because all I'm really multiplying by is 1. And now do the same for the second term. I have 1 plus the cosecant of x, all divided by the cotangent of x. And what do I have to multiply that denominator by to get the LCD? I have to multiply it by 1 plus cosecant of x, which means I also have to multiply the numerator by 1 plus the cosecant of x. So now, are both of my denominators the same? Yes. So now I can write everything over 1 plus the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. And what are we going to get in the numerator? I have the cotangent of x times the cotangent of x, which is cotangent squared x, plus... 1 plus cosecant of x times itself. So I'm just going to write that out longhand as 1 plus the cosecant of x times 1 plus the cosecant of x. So working on the numerator, I'm going to get cotangent squared x. And then I'm going to foil this out, but you could do it by the shortcut of squaring a binomial if you're comfortable doing it that way. But if I foil these two binomials, I'm going to get plus, first, 1 times 1 is 1. Outer, 1 times the cosecant of x is the cosecant of x. Inner, the cosecant of x times 1 is just the cosecant of x. Plus last, cosecant of x times the cosecant of x is the cosecant squared x all divided by my common denominator of 1 plus cosecant x times cotangent x. And now, if you notice in the numerator, I have cotangent squared x plus 1, and using this Pythagorean identity, I can replace it with cosecant squared x. So my numerator now becomes, instead of these two terms, I'm going to write cosecant squared x plus 
Middle two terms are like terms. Cosecant x plus cosecant x is 2 cosecant x plus cosecant squared x all divided by 1 plus cosecant x times cotangent x. So I'm running out of room. I need to stop it, the video for a second and go to my next slide. So this is where we got to on the previous slide. And can we simplify the numerator anymore? Yes, I have a cosecant squared x and a cosecant squared x. So I'm going to have 2 cosecant squared x plus 2 cosecant x all divided by 1 plus cosecant x times cotangent x. Still not where I want to go, but I'm seeing 2s appear, which is good. My numerator, I can pull out the common factor of 2 cosecant x. And what's it going to leave behind? If you pull a 2 cosecant x out of 2 cosecant squared x, it's going to leave cosecant x plus. And if you pull a 2 cosecant x out of a 2 cosecant x, you have to leave the placeholder of 1. All divided by 1 plus the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. Finally, something nice is happening. This reduces because remember, in addition, order doesn't matter. So 1 plus cosecant of x is the same as cosecant of x plus 1. So I can reduce those two and I get 2 times the cosecant of x all divided by the cotangent of x. Sorry for my bad handwriting. We're trying to prove it equals 2 times the secant of x. So I think at this point, we're going to write everything in terms of sines and cosines. So my numerator is going to become 2 over 1 times the cosecant of x is 1 over the sine of x all divided by the cotangent of x, which is cosine of x divided by sine of x. I'm kind of running out of room again, so let's go up here. So this is 2 over 1 times 1 over the sine of x. Multiply across, I get 2 over 1 times sine x is sine x, all divided by cosine x over sine x. And now we're going to divide our fractions. You take the fraction in the numerator, 2 over sine x, multiply it by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. So that's going to be sine x over cosine x. Yay, my sine x is reduced. And I get 2 over 1 times 1 over cosine x which is just 2 over 1 is 2, and what's 1 over cosine x? It's secant x. So I finally got my 2 secant x, which equals my right-hand side. So I have proved that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so I've verified this identity.